Assalamu alaikum and a very good day to all viewers out there. Welcome back to my channel. This is the third video uh, dealing with the preparation of uh, statement of cash flow under direct method. There were two first uh, two videos earlier where I have already discussed uh, the uh, cash flow from financing activities, cash and cash equivalent schedule as well as cash flow from investing activities. In this video, I'm going to continue discussing on how do we determine the cash flow from operating activities. Before that, uh, earlier on, we were talking about investing activities and I was uh, doing the last part in my first two videos, which is the second one, the interest income received of 708. If you can check the question uh, that is available in the first link of the video right uh, the interest income just to uh, just to relate to what you have done using the color coded approach uh, this one is what you have here so the interest income here uh, should be color code as also using blue because uh, interest income was included in the calculation of profit default tax but somehow income from investment which is interest income or uh, actually income from investing activities and therefore it has to be removed right uh, basically when you prepare your statement of reconciliation later so that was the case and ap apart from that uh, you also have this in your uh, statement of uh, financial position where you have your accrued interest here so if you look at the accrued interest here is the interest income receivable, right? So this interest income receivable that we used earlier to reconstruct our account for our interest income, yeah, was uh, actually also should be color coded as blue. And uh, that was because I'm using the color coded approach, right? So it should be blue here. So that is somehow now matched with the color that I use in my, uh, cash flow from investing activities to recap I just show you again i'm talking about this right the cash flow that you earn 694 um, will not be included here because what you include in the cash flow from investing activities are the cash that you actually receive from the interest income so this is the one that you include but somehow this item here is actually a non-operating item it is a cash item but somehow it is non-operating since that was from investing uh, activities so therefore that will later be used for our uh, statement of reconciliation which is to reconcile the profit before tax to the cash flow from operation so now let's move on to the uh, cash flow from operating activities if you can still recall under direct method yeah the cash flow from operating activities i'm now moving on to step number five yeah where in step five our focus is to determine the cash flow from operating activities right so uh, this one is under indirect method so i will just uh, hide that yeah because um, we're not dealing with that we are dealing with cash flow from operating activities under the in direct method not the case here but we are dealing with this so to determine the cash flow from operating activities under the direct method so there are main source of uh, cash flow coming from cash receipt from customer so which is the gross receipt from the customer which will be the source of uh, operating activities and the outflow of cash will normally be in the form of cash payments to supplier yeah where we will have to reconstruct the account and also cash payment to uh, other uh, expenses and cash payment to employees so this is what we're going to do now to find the first item which is under our cash flow from operating activities is to set up the trade receivable account so what you will do is first what you're going to do is you're going to put all the figures that you get from the soft p right you're going to include the balance brought down there 
the trade receivable your target is to find this what are the cash that you receive from the from your customer right from our customer means from our trade uh, receivables so the cash inflow is from sales revenue uh, that happened during the current accounting period so the relevant account that you will have to refer is uh, account receivable so that's why we are reconstructing the account receivable or the trade receivable here so i'm putting the balance of the account and put the balance carry down put the balance brought down right and then we can put the sales the credit sales only because remember trade receivable is related to credit sales so put the revenue where do you get the revenue this is directly from the statement of profit or loss this is the one that you you took from here and for the uh, balance brought down for your trade receivable they are taken from here so you take the balance on the uh, balance brought down put on the debit side balance uh, carried down put on the credit side balance cd so after you have done that you'll be able to check if there is any other thing maybe in this case none but in case you may have other adjustment consider for any bad debts written off as well for example you may have some uh, debtors that were confirmed to be bad and uncollectible and you will have to write off the bad debts so that bad debts will be debited to the allowance for impairment of trade receivable or the loss allowance right allowance under the uh, allowance method and here uh, that there is none i'm just putting in case you may come across and the accounts that will be credited is the trade receivable right basically if there are any bad debts written off you will go and credit them to the trade receivable so that will also make uh, some kind of adjustment here but here none in case you have that that is uh, showing that there are some adjustment right here none so with that you will be able to get your item for your cash flow from uh, operating activities which is representing the cash receive from customer so this figure will be put in your statement of cash flow as working one right and this will be put later where it will be put here and this is the first I line item that you have here okay cash receive from customer now we move on to find the cash payments to supplier for cash receive from customer you will have to reconstruct the trade receivable account because we want to see what happened but in our case here we are looking at cash payments to supply i have some little notes here for you to take into consideration uh, of uh, dealing with cash flow from uh, operating activities under the direct method so for cash payments to supplier they are that derived from the payments that we made to our supplier which is our trade payables right and the relevant account that you need to reconstruct is accounts payable to get the credit purchase and when you reconstruct the, your your purpose is to find what is your payment that you made to the supplier which is what is actually being credited to our bank account and debited to our accounts are payable so you need to do the step that i put here put the balance yeah you put the balance so i am doing that and since in our case here your purchase is not given directly the purchase amount is not available if you check your your statement of profit or loss the purchase is, is not available it is given only here as cost of sale so these items are not available right so these are not available because of that we will have to reconstruct the accounts to get the purchase itself so i'm going to reconstruct my inventory account or maybe you can also reconstruct cost of sale so this one are uh, going to be under our operating activities right so we're going to reconstruct that so let's do that okay so i'm going to do the second alternative here which is to reconstruct the inventory account so when i do that i will put all the details that i have put the balance 
put the balance brought down put the balance carry down and then put your cost of sale include your cost of sale you can take the cost of sale where from from the statement of profit or loss and the last or the balancing amount that you will get will be your purchase amount which is your purchase credit purchase right and your credit purchase is nine six eight zero how do you get that total up the credit side and then see what are the balancing amount on the debit side right okay when you have done that that credit purchase will have to be credited to the trade payable account so the same process will be done now what we're going to do is uh, we are going to reconstruct the inventory account we have done that and uh, what we will do now is we are going to also reconstruct the accounts payable so i'm going to reconstruct the accounts payable now so i'm going to highlight this for a while to let you see what i'm doing okay i'm doing the reconstruction of accounts payable put the balance and work it out okay put the balance put the credit balance the um, on the credit side which is the balance at the beginning of the year on the credit side put the balance at the end of the year on the debit side and here you go you'll be able to get the total now and the figure that you're looking for is cash payments to supplier and that cash payments to supplier I put purple here will be how much the balancing amount which is to take the total here total credit is will be also the total debit right so that will be shown here and 1002 is as a result of 10704 uh, minus 1002 it will be giving you the figure of 9504 so that 9504 will be cash payments to supplier so that will be the figure here okay then cash payments to supplier 9504 that is an outflow so you i put the reference here so that easier for us to cross refer so working one working two now we will be doing cash uh, payment to employees and other operating expenses so we're trying to get this figure which is looking at what are other cash payments that will form part of the operating activities so for cash payments of, uh, to employees, this is normally uh, dealing with payment of salaries. In, uh, in this question, um, if you are given directly the salaries account, you may have to reconstruct what I suggested here, right? In part A here. If you are not given the salaries account separately, you may uh, also be able to get the cash payments to other operating expenses so the uh, cash payments to employee uh, in our case there are no salaries account given in the uh, in the tribal sorry in the uh, statement of financial position no such thing here uh, I as any accrued or prepaid right also none given here directly however you should know that salaries are normally part of admin costs yeah salaries are part of admin costs so what we'll do is we're going to make use of this admin cost and distribution cost and reconstruct the admin and distribution cost account and admin and distribution expenses here is actually the operating expenses remember when you prepare your statement of profit or loss Operating expenses will comprise admin and distribution. So what you will do is you're going to put the, if you have any uh, accrued or prepaid, yeah, you have one. If you go and check your statement of financial position under the current liability section, you will have that. And then you put the, uh, later you put your accrued uh, accruals balance at the end of the year. So you do that, where do you take that? it will be from your from your current liabilities the one here right other accruals i'm taking the one here so i take the 
27, which is the beginning of the year, 1 1st of October 2007, I put on the credit side and the one at the end of the year I put on the debit side. So after I have done that, now I will put back the item or I will reconstruct to get what? To get the cash payments for other operating expenses. Okay. Here you go. Okay. First, we put the expenses back here. So I take where where are these taken from? This one eight seven two is actually from admin and selling. Admin and selling. Uh, each is one eight seven two and eight hundred and forty thousand. And this is two seven one two. This is what being charged in the profit or loss. Are we interested uh, to know this? Not really, but we are interested to know what are the cash uh, expense that we have actually. Um, spend throughout the year. We want to know what our cash expense. This one. To get to do and uh, this amount, what you need to see is can you check this notes that I put here. So cash payments to other operating expenses, they are actually uh, comprising of distribution and admin. And you need to adjust for any effects of non-cash transaction. So if let's say in the admin expenses, it has included some uh, depreciation or any non-cash transaction, non-operating items that, um, for example, it has also included some items that are cash expense, but they are not operating uh, cash flow. So that should also be adjusted. So you have to reconstruct and find the cash payment uh, made uh, to these other operating expenses. Put the balance as what I have done just now. Put the amount for the admin and distribution expenses I just, I just did just now and exclude and adjust out any non-cash expense and non-cash income items from the account. What are those items? Okay, these are the items that you may have to consider. In our case, these are non-cash and non-operating items. You need to go and adjust out the non-cash item, cash expense like depreciation. So to adjust out means to remove it is if it is uh, included. So you are going to adjust out the non-operating item with cash effect uh, under investing activities if you have and also going to adjust out if there are any item that are um, part of financing but somehow was included under the operating expenses so you have to adjust out i put the notes here you can check out but what i'm going to do is to look to relate to this question so if you look at additional information number okay before that what we have already done here i will put a tick as i said we need to always check and analyze what we have done all right that one and i'm also going to put it here because I have adjusted my okay my um, inventories and also one more is here okay this one are to be included because we are trying to to check that all items have been analyzed, right? Okay, now we will move on to our things that related to admin expenses. Okay, if you see here, development cost, right, is uh, part of admin expenses, the development cost written off. But somehow, if you read further in number three, that explains the detail in number one. Kisti, uh, number three, yeah? the current year depreciation charges for the property plan and equipment of 500,000. Take note that this current year depreciation charges is a non-cash expense. And development costs that were written off are also non-cash expense and they were written off in the admin cost. So meaning that the admin cost also includes non-cash item. For the purpose of preparing cash flow, under operating activities, you need to just show the operating cash 
outflow or cash inflow by removing all the non-cash or non-operating items. So that has been written off. You now you need to go and make the adjustment here because you need to understand that before you derive the figure that you have here, in these figures, it also has included the uh, non-cash expense, the two non-cash expenses that you have here, which is the depreciation and the development costs. Okay, so what again to do is you should be able to see that that was already debited here. It was debited here. Sorry, the two expenses were debited here. Right. And these two expenses are non-cash expense. So I put the blue color here. So it's the cost, right? So these two were included. So at the end, what you can find now is that you can find what are the cash outflow or the cash payments to other expenses by uh, reconstructing the account. And therefore, the amount would be total up the credit side. Total up the credit side. It was 2739 and the debit side will also be the same. The balancing figure here will be the cash payments to other operating expenses. Right. So this 1814. So there are no cash payments to employees that were directly given here. Yeah. It may have inc been included in the figure given in 2712 here so check this yeah notes uh, yourself what i'm going to do is to put the item that i derive here 1814 will be included here as an outflow okay now we will get the total which is what you call cash generated from operation. So the cash generated from operation would be 13,088. And our next task is to find out the uh, cash flow from operating activities. But before that, you need to also go and adjust or remove the interest paid and show the how much is the uh, operating cash flow being used to pay out interest as well as how much is being used to pay out your tax we'll be doing that and you can reconstruct the account because here the detail on tax is not given in terms of what is the tax paid if you check the additional information no direct information on tax paid right so does the information on interest no information that were given as the uh, additional information for interest but somehow what you have here the one that i'm highlighting here okay this figure this item you need to go and put the item back to its place meaning that go and reconstruct the tax payable account uh, and also reconstruct that tax account to, together with the tax recoverable. So you are going to go and um, put the tax recoverable balance beginning of the year on the debit side of your taxation account and the tax payable account will be on the credit side which is the balance carried down. The same thing also will be done for your accrued interest. The beginning balance put on the credit side, 30, and the carried down balance you're going to put on the credit, uh, the debit side, 15. So do that. Go and reconstruct. Mm -hmm. Go and reconstruct here. So do the same balance for the interest. Okay. Do it, do it here. Do for your tax. Remember, beginning of the year, it was a tax recoverable. So it is 
having a debit balance and at the end of the year you have a tax payable so balance carried down will be on the debit side because balance kept brought down will be on the credit side and then find out what are your tax expense there are no adjustment for tax uh, deferred tax here but find out for the tax expense yeah this one is given in the um, statement of profit or loss I'm doing for tax total up the side okay total up the credit side and then put the total on the debit side and now you can find what is your tax payment and your tax payment is the balancing amount of 2862 that will be included in your operating activities i put here oa5 operating activities number five next uh this one you will include that in the operating activities tax paid is 2862 you can check working for for that which i'm with which is the working that i'm doing here oh it is working five actually so just this is just for you to cross refer easier for you to cross refer next okay you will be doing for this the same thing for interest i'll just reveal this for you interest total up your interest total up yep and you'll be getting your interest paid and your interest paid is going to be put under your operating activities so that is for interest paid right okay so you are done with the operating activities our next task so now is to total up what are our operating activities before that yeah you i'm going to highlight uh, this charge for the year that you have for your tax and interest okay the one that i get here where do we get the item the item is obtained from the statement of profit or loss in case you wonder where do i get that okay so the uh, taxation Yep, the one that I include there is from here. Okay, and the item here, which is the interest co uh, finance cost, 500,000 is included here. This is non-operating item, right? Non-operating item, finance cost, 500,000. This one we have already done much earlier, the non-cash item revaluation surplus okay all these are already checked right all these items have been uh, somehow analyzed we have already analyzed all this item okay we just put this to make sure that things are okay all right so we have done the anal analyze analysis part now we are going to uh, prepare the statement for reconciliation before that let us check and do step number six what is step number six this is step number five we have done step number five this one this one is step number five the one that you have here yeah which is determine the cash flow from operating activities after you have done this we're going to do the step six and step six is to reconcile the item so reconcile the item means you need to do and check if you have the correct figure okay go and check in all the accounts have you completed the template Total up the operating activities, total up the investing and financing activities and reconcile the total that you arrive from that three cash flow activities with the net increase in cash and cash equivalent. I've done this 
here okay and the total for my cash flow from operating activities is 9711 if you add up you will get 2787 if you add up that so you will get 2787 this one yeah this one is as a result of totaling up the three activities and this one should tally this should tally with the net changes that you arrive when you prepare your cash and cash equivalent schedule the next step is to prepare the statement of reconciliation which is normally done if you prepare using your direct method the standards requires uh, the company to also disclose the uh, profit before tax adjustment so how do you reconcile the profit before tax to the cash flow from operation meaning that this is actually something similar to indirect method so what you should include here i will just reveal and show you this item should be those that you have already included when you uh, prepare your indirect method so include all the non-cash item and non-operating item so in our case it was development costs written off depreciation expense loss on fair value change of ip which is shown in the sopple and then you have your profit on disposal of long-term investment uh, whatever that was earlier being added now it will be deducted right whatever that was earlier being deducted now it will be added because we want to arrive at the op uh, the operating cash flow so if you can see these are the reference this relates to what we earlier prepared right what we earlier prepared which is based on our working for our uh, investing activities and also working from our uh, operating activities much earlier and then you will be doing the same thing again here uh, which is looking at the movement of working uh, capital yeah see you will have to check what are the increase or decrease in inventories just like what you did for your direct method so i've done this uh, as well All right I go and check that the inventories how do you get this you can go and compare the item here yeah the accounts payable the inventories account receivable right and uh, another one is the accruals here the accruals right okay so you will see that these are being adjusted here the increase in inventories for example are being deducted uh, because you have to spend more cash right uh, as, as well so therefore uh, that one is being adjusted here decrease in account receivable is being uh, ad added because now it shows that your customer are paying the amount due to to you and now you have more cash inflow that is why the decrease in account receivable are being uh, added right with that you got 13088 and this 13088 yeah should be equal to i put a color here i just use some some pink here yeah right? this color this 13088 cash generated from operation is what you should derive and it should be equal to what you have prepared using here so that is equal right so when that is equal it means that you have already now reconcile the profit before tax to cash flow from operation so cash generated from operation either way you got the same 13 uh, 0 double 8 with that i thank you for watching i'll see you when i will see you um this is uh, the last video on statement of cash flow and i hope you will uh, try to uh, watch my other two videos that i will put the link right at the bottom which is on the description uh, part thank you so much and assalamualaikum